Hey fish folk, Bert here with a very overdue video. It's been a while since I made a video of any kind, but we did have the Underwater Pet Expo here in Melbourne, Victoria in October 2022. So it was time for me to come out of my dark, comfy pleco cave of self-imposed isolation. The Underwater Pet Expo is a weekend-long event centering around the aquarium hobby in Australia. It's both a showcase of new aquarium products, a range of fish, coral and plants available to us, and a networking opportunity for aquarium suppliers and businesses, both local interstate and international. It's also an opportunity for people to get together, learn and share, and talk about the hobby we love so much. I find events like this can be a source of inspiration and discovery. For example, this epistogrammatic master eye that I have in this aquarium. I saw one in an aquascape at the previous expo and I just had to get one. The 2022 expo was the second time that this particular event has ever been run, the last being just before the pandemic in March 2020. And as a result, I think a lot of us aquarists have been busting to have another event like this. Unfortunately, we did have a pretty bad streak with flooding in Victoria, and as well as across the eastern states around this time. So certain roads were closed and some people unfortunately had their hands full dealing with the flooding situation at home. Regardless, I'm quite lucky to live where I live and I was able to come along and film this event unimpeded. At the entry of this event, they were selling t-shirts with a new design this year. I quite like this design, which is by Bodgy who also does videos on YouTube. This design just really pops with the bright colours. I love that we've got salt water on top and fresh water below, with the typography nestled nicely in between. And of course we can't forget the sponsors on the back. And the print quality is really really good compared to the previous shirt. A new feature of this event was a dark black light salt water art workspace, which also doubled as an entranceway after getting the tickets and shirt. As an artist myself, I like to appreciate and look at art related to the hobby. These would look amazing in a fish room with reefing aquariums. My personal favourite would probably be one of these angelfish. Beyond the artsy luminescent abyss, the first thing I noticed in my initial walkthrough was the wider variety of displays and vendors for different types of hobbyists. A big difference from the previous expo was the amount of livestock and plants for sale, which tends to be a big draw for many hobbyists. There were lots of shrimp, particularly near Caridina and Caridina shrimp. A fan favourite, of course, was the better fish. There were many for sale on the weekend. The sheer variety of better fish alone was great. They even had giant varieties, which are not a common sight. Other mainstays of the hobby were around as well, such as South American cichlids, African cichlids, a big range of life bearers of the guppy and non-guppy persuasion, and plenty of schooling fish. They had really good deals on schooling fish that were much cheaper than the usual retail price. I wish I had gotten about a dozen dwarf reservoirs, but because I was busy filming, they were sold out by the time I got around to it. The fancy goldfish brought in by Aquatico Aquarium were very impressive in size and quality. Just looking at these fish, I really wish I had the space for a fancy goldfish aquarium. Plants were also for sale and not just relegated to looking pretty in aquascapes. In particular, there were some rarer plants such as Bucephalandra, rare mosses, uncommon stem plants, and Madagascar lace. 
Let's not forget about salt water. There were lots of corals and anatomies for sale. While there weren't any saltwater fish on offer, there were shrimp. I don't know what any of these species are, being unfamiliar with the saltwater side of the hobby, but I must say, some of these shrimp are most definitely sexy. With a glut of livestock for sale, I did end up buying and trading for some. I'm trying out crystal red shrimp for the first time, and I couldn't resist this crowndale better fish. She has really lovely fin form, even if she does look a bit plain in the colour department. I wasn't expecting to come home with a bucephalandra, but I certainly did. It's been growing really well despite me dropping it on the floor when I got home. Red plants feature quite heavily in high-end aquascape displays, so I'm trying out some for the first time. It's definitely making a difference for this piddly excuse of a tiny aquascape. Speaking of aquascapes, let's get back to the expo. Aquascapes and hardscapes were plentiful throughout the show floor. There were also ready-made hardscapes for sale, both for saltwater and freshwater. These ready-made ones were the works of the esteemed aquascaper Jagdeep of Jag Aquatics. Some of these displays were put together in the days before for this event, and some others were well-established aquascapes that were brought in from local aquariums. You might recognise that some aquascape styles look familiar, and that's because some of these were crafted by aquascapers competing in the Underwater Pet Expo's aquascaping competition. Like the previous event, the Expo hosted an aquascaping competition with 11 competing aquascapers from all over Australia. They had roughly 7 hours on Saturday to create a full aquascape. This time they had large sized aquariums, which allows for more possibilities when creating the illusion of depth. While they did have an endless choice of driftwood, rock, and plants, they still have the challenge of doing it all in a single day. This is a very unique challenge for a competition. Since online aquascaping competitions are done over the course of months, and allow time for the aquascaper to grow in plants, make adjustments, and take that perfect competition photo. With a shorter time span and the expo environment, these aquascapes will have that initial day one look. That said, it is very impressive what they have achieved in such a short amount of time. I can imagine that these aquascapes will be looking even better given some time for the plants to grow in, and with regular maintenance. Watching everyone aquascape live was great insight into the process of aquascaping, which was quite chaotic. Thankfully, on Sunday the space was cleared out for judging and viewing, with the cloudy water of the freshly set up aquariums clearing up very well overnight. I have a montage of the aquascaping competition itself in a playlist in the description of this video, so if you want, check it out. As flashy as livestock and aquascapes are, we can't have aquariums without the business end of things, and that is all the equipment, maintenance, additives, food, accessories, and whatnot that keep our aquariums looking great and livestock healthy. There were lots of things that could add convenience, variety, or were just plain cool and fun. There were plenty of terrariums and paludariums, which are adjacent to the aquarium hobby, and as someone who is both into aquatic and terrestrial plants, I find them quite tantalising. I haven't got any terrariums like these displays, but it's definitely something that I would like to try one day. The expo brought plenty of new things into my radar, like these really cool stackable modular caves, with ends that could be capped or uncapped depending on the fish's preference, or fertilizer and CO2 additives in the form of tablets for nano aquariums, where it might not be desirable to have a big bulky CO2 canister. There were tons of fish food and free samples to come with, some of which were brand new yet to be released to the market. I got plenty of freebies to try out, these samples are great for determining if your fish like a particular food, 
Nothing is worse than buying a really big can of fish food, only to find out that your fish are really picky and won't eat any of it. There were some really interesting things, like the shrimp food for enhancing specific colours of shrimp. I've never seen anything quite like this before, so it has me curious. Though I probably wouldn't use it for my breeding colonies, as I want to work with the pure genetics of my shrimp, but for display-only shrimp, I would be very interested. Some Aussie businesses were around to promote their locally cultured and frozen food selection. Some things were display only as awareness and promotion, and others were for sale at very decent event discounts. For example, I got some essential supplies for much cheaper than most retail stores would normally have. And when you have a fish room or a whole bunch of tanks, the cost of water amendments and test kits can really balloon. What I find interesting about the saltwater side of the hobby is the different equipment and the aesthetics that come along with it. It has this sleek and clean look, with bright Technicolor accents in many designs. It kind of reminds me of gaming PCs and electronics. Dosing pumps, protein skimmers and sumps, lighting and all. It's quite a look. In a unique little corner, there was this really cool artist with some artworks, patches and pins, all under black light. These were for sale, and I couldn't help but buy myself a few small things. I couldn't bring home live goldfish, but I can certainly get some artistic representations of them. It was really nice to see the Aquarium Society of Victoria being represented at the expo this time. I highly recommend joining them if you'd like to go to their club meetings and a variety of events throughout the year. The club meetings often have really insightful talks and presentations, as well as plenty of veteran fish keepers whose brains you can pick. I was hoping to see some Angfa representation, as they are a group that focuses on native fish in the Australia and New Guinea region, but I think they had a pretty big conference on the same weekend in Brisbane. I still believe that having biotopes and native fish feature in the expo in some sort of way is very important. We do have suppliers and breeders and growers in Australia that do work with native plants and fish that could contribute to something like this. Not only would this boost the ecological side of the hobby, but it might inspire some young naturalist, ecologist or ichthyologist in the making. Throughout the weekend, there were plenty of talks and presentations pertaining to the aquarium hobby. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend any of them simply because I was walking around and filming the entire time. But it is possible to watch some of these online. You can find some of these presentations fully recorded and uploaded onto YouTube, which I'll try my best to find and also add to my Underwater Pet Expo playlist. Meeting people and feeling that strong sense of community honestly has been the highlight of the entire event. When I spoke with vendors, event staff and attendees, one thing was very clear. We are all hobbyists at heart. There was so much energy, enthusiasm and kindness from everyone that I got to talk to on the weekend. I am very much looking forward to the next expo. If you've made it through this little marathon of a video, thank you for joining me. If you want to check out more videos related to the Underwater Pet Expo, I have a playlist linked in the description below. This video took me an ungodly amount of time to record and edit. There were a lot of hiccups with failed recordings and bad noise, and unfortunately um, just it's been very hard to record basically. I'm not sure when my next video will be or when I'll make another, but feel free to subscribe to my channel for more in the future, whenever that may be.